Surefire Wednesdays. Thank you for joining us. We've got an exciting recipe for you tonight. Oh, yeah. we've, been, uh, we've been digging in the freezer. So you know what time of year it is. The freezer is full. You're thinking about hunting season coming up. And you've got all kinds of... Duck. 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 Beautiful duck breasts. Now what do you do with this? I talked to a guy at, uh, at the SHOT Show this year. And he said, Chef, I got a freezer full of duck breasts. And I can only saute them so many times. So Bailey was... It was actually Bailey's brilliant idea. And actually, actually, it wasn't. It was a viewer's idea well, that true. we tweaked a little. He had the idea for venison pizza, but we had done venison so much we wanted to change it up a bit. So we dug in the freezer. It took a while. We got all the bear meat and all that on top. But we found duck breast in the bottom, and we were like, eh, maybe. Duck breast <laughs> pizza. So we're going to do it barbecued, though. We're going to barbecue because, let's face it, this time of year, we have to get outside. And just a quick introduction. So my name is Jonathan Collins. This is my oldest son, Dakota. Hi, everybody. And my youngest son, Bailey. Hi. And we are uh, quickly becoming known as the Collins Guys, the outdoor <laughs> chef. And, uh, and it's our absolute pleasure to come to you tonight. Yep. Um, the Outdoor Chef, Surefire Wednesdays, is all about you. It's all about you finding ways to get those, you know, like we said, your freezer's full. Yep. How do you cook it and so that you're not bored with it? Something that's interesting. So what we're doing is we're going to the fundamentals. If we're doing pizza, you can buy pizza dough, no yep. problem. Yep. But we're going to give you the tools. If you want to make it yourself, the outdoor chef is going to hook you up. And it's only five simple ingredients to exactly. make, to make yeah, pizza dough, which I didn't know till this afternoon. So I'm going to do my best to make it here with you guys. So kind of follow along <laughs> with me. Yeah, so this is the beautiful thing about the outdoor chef is that we are professional chefs. But these recipes for you, we're testing in real live time here. Yep. So we just get inspired. We went to the market. You can see we've got some pears here, some Anjou and bear, Boss pears. Could be any pear, but when you say roasted pears and duck, oh, that is a marriage, man. man. That is a beautiful. A little bit of balsamic. I've never had duck before. Really? I've never had Nothing? Duck. Okay. Oh, okay. So a lot of firsts for Bailey. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get started with that. So uh, go ahead and take us through that yeah. recipe. So uh, the, you, can, you can do this by hand, but it's a lot easier with the mixer. We've got the classic dough hook in here, and all that does, it makes it a lot easier to incorporate all the ingredients in there. Yeah, and if you have to, if you don't have a uh, mixer, you're going to have to knead it. We're going to let the dough hook and the Cuisinart do the work for us, but you need have five minutes. Uh, there should be one right there. Oh, there isn't. No? Okay, no. yeah, just need a regular little knife. So we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, four cups of flour. I got a knife here, so you always want really even measures. So if you take the back of the knife and just run it along there, you always get nice even measures. And once again, you'll see that we're mixing our wet and dry ingredients first. You know why? And that's just to make sure that all those ingredients get incorporated well. So Bailey's putting those dry ingredients in. I'm going to get started on the wet ingredients. So what I have here is two cups of warm water. It's really important that it's warm water. Not hot, not cold, just warm. And then I've got some active dry yeast. So this is uh, two teaspoons going in. Watching dry yeast is just incredible. I remember one time, it was actually in our Elf Burger recipe, our foam got to be about four inches tall. When it, it smelled like a brewery oh, here. Honestly, goodness. it was awesome. You could really see how uh, beer is made and gets that foam. It was just awesome. And into the flour, I'm putting now two teaspoons of salt. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whisk this up. And what happens is uh, the yeast starts to activate, yeah. begins consuming that sugar, and uh, what we have is, we actually, we've got a little microbrewery yeah. going on here. And uh, so what Bailey's doing is he's turning that on. Yeah, I'm turning it on. With this, I'm, I don't really want to go more above two or three on my mixer settings. Real slow, slowly bring the ingredients together. And as soon as that starts to foam up, then yeah. I'm going to start incorporating it here into this mixture. So we've got an exciting thing because last week we gave yeah. away a mixer, but yeah. we didn't know we didn't announce it until right now. So we'd like to announce that it is the the winner's name, uh, Jessica Rose. Jessica Rose. Jessica. Jessica. Rose. Now we Jessica has been with us, I think, almost since the very beginning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's been liking and commenting. And that's all you have to do to win, is like this broadcast, share it with your friends, maybe tag somebody, yep. and then tell us why you are the one that needs this mixer. And 
Okay, well, go ahead. Like, yeah, last week we did a, a quick knife demo and she said, I'll get my steak knives out and get her husband to videotape me doing a little <laughs> demo. She said she cuts everything with her steak knives and that the mixer sure would look great in her kitchen and it would be a great partner. So that's awesome. Now listen, that was for, we were celebrating Canada Day and yep. the 4th of July, but now we're celebrating summer. We're going to give another one away tonight. Yep. So we've got red, we've got white, and we've got that gunmetal gray. So we want to give you, we want to give you the tools you need to get in the kitchen. So all you have to do is like this broadcast, yep. share this broadcast, and then tell us why you need one of these mixers in your home. And then uh, do us a favor, tag a friend who liked this broadcast, yep. and uh, we'll keep going. Keep in mind, this is your opportunity. If you have any questions, now's the time to ask it. We'd love to answer those questions in real time. And there's no stupid questions either. That's We're all right. trying to learn here, and if you have any questions, don't be afraid afraid to ask them. Just ask them. And like I said, there's no stupid questions. So if you want to grab the yeah. camera, because I want to have a look at I want, I'm going to reveal this dough. So uh, if you check our Instagram feed, you'll see we went live earlier, uh, just giving you little steps of this dough. But I don't want to do the magic of television thing. I want you to see it. Come on over here. So I've got my oven. Now you'll notice the oven is not actually turned on. But what I do have is I've got the light in the oven on. And so that, that radiant heat from just that little bit of uh, light is just enough to proof... Our, oh my God, are you kidding me? Look at this dough, Bailey. It's so... Look at that. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. This is the thing about cooking. If you can... If you can honestly, this will make you feel like a kid again. Because it's so, the tactile nature of it, um, the smell of it, it's literally filling the kitchen. And of course, when we take this out to the barbecue and bake it, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. So Dakota, I want to show this uh, liquid. Uh, it's not quite foamed up enough yet. So let's do a little bit. I want to turn this out. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Um, I want to turn this out. But we'll just leave it covered heat. for a minute. You can feel the heat from the light. Yeah. Just the light. You it's tell just it's, enough. It's warm. It's not like it's cold or anything like that. It's actually so, a little warm. So let's start. This is uh, because we uh, want to accelerate this. So you need to leave this for about 5 to 10 minutes. This is a really fresh yeast. And you can see already on top, it's already beginning to foam up. So that's an active yeast. You want that to be activated ahead of time. And then come on over here and just, just literally, babe, just yep. slowly pour that in. Let's see what that looks like. So it slowly begins to incorporate, you can see how that orbital motion of the mixer does such a beautiful job of bringing the dough together. It means that you just literally you can set it and forget about it and walk away. Uh, now if you're doing this by hand, what you want to do is you want to begin to slowly incorporate it. Same way you would do a pasta dough or any dough. You'd set all those ingredients out on the counter, make a little well in the center, pour your liquids into the center, and then using a fork, just gently start to incorporate them. Working that dough together until it comes together and forms, and then you want to start to knead it. So it's a great thing. You should do that anyway, honestly. You know, having that kind of connection with something, this is literally alive. So now what we want to do is we want to find some great ways to flavor it. We know we've got the duck breast. So this beautiful duck breast, Cody, I'll let you take that up to the yep. camera there. That beautiful duck breast, you can see that deep, rich color. We've got a question. Yes, Megan? Um, we actually have, like you said, I'm liking and sharing. I would love the white mixer. It would be for my awesome wife. She is embracing the outdoors. She's in the Nice. Oh, nice. And we are both learning to cook. This would be an awesome tool for us to use together. Thank oh. you for the consideration. That's awesome. That's Thank awesome. you. That was Mike? Thank you, Mike. That's great. That's uh, nice, nice things to say about your wife, too. That's awesome. So, and that's one of the great things about cooking is it does get you back in the kitchen. Yeah. Hands up out there if you are too busy to get in your kitchen, sit around a table with your family. I got a room full of people here at my house, and their hands are up. Their hands are up. Uh, <laughs> we know how difficult it is, but let's, let's, let's throw down a challenge. Yep. I'm challenging you this week. Carve out one day. For me, this week, it's going to be Sunday. We're going to do family meal. And everybody yeah. here, my whole family's here. They're all going to hold my feet to the fire on this one. <laughs> uh, I think we'll do ribs. Let's yeah, do ribs. ribs. Uh, we've got, uh, but my challenge to you is this. Carve out just one day. Just one day. Do this recipe or a version of this recipe. One of the great things about doing these pizza. Now, we're going to do a big pizza. Yep. We'll do like a 12 to 14 incher. 
But you know what you can do? You can take this dough and you can divide it up, make individual pizzas. Yep. And if, if you're taking the time out to make a dough, why not do a double batch? You know, this was four cups and stuff like that. Do eight. Cut it in half and freeze it in the freezer. Well, maybe not. Pizza dough freeze is great in the freezer. If you make sure it's nice and flat, set it in the freezer. Yes. The next time you want pizza, just bring it out, thaw it out, yep. and you're good to go again. You don't have to do it again. It's such a good point. You know, anytime you pull out all of the gear that you need to make food, you know, when you're grinding, let's say, venison, you don't just do little portions of it. You get set up, you do the whole thing. Yep. It could be the same thing with your pizza dough. Yep. Because it's inexpensive, because it's just a few ingredients, why not make three or four batches of it, divide it up, Freeze some, use some. Yes, Megan, question. Um, so John said, I would love to make fresh bread and other pastries with a mixer instead of pounding it out with my hand. Can yes. Victor, would be a help? Good, good. Thank you, John. Thank you for you watching. You must have arms of steel, John. Yeah. You know what it takes to pound out bread. <laughs> yeah, That's it's tough. Sure. It's very tough. So this is coming together nicely. Yep. So here's a little bit of a, we've got just a little bit of, yes, go ahead. Um, Jessica, Jessica, you won. You won the mixer. Your choice, <laughs> red, white, or that gunmetal gray. You can uh, just comment, direct message us, and we'll get that sent out to you. So this is there's something happening here that I actually want to show them. So whenever you're working with uh, bread, the bread recipes, anything with pastry is very finite. It's like a um, it's like a, a a chemical reaction that's happening all the time. And every now and then, it's, it's, it's scientific in the sense that it's absolute. But what you can see there, and I'll show you the remedy for that, you see how that seems to be just a little bit wet. wet. Yeah. So it's very, it's logical. So I've got, a, I've got a dough that's just slightly wet. So literally, I'm gonna add a bit more flour. Now, if that was the opposite of that, and let's say it was a little bit dry, it, then you just add a little bit of water. And the reason that ha that happens is that we're, listen, we're all, if I, I've been in Georgia this time of year, let me tell you, the humidity in Georgia is going to get into your flour. And then if I'm in Hawaii or if I'm in Alaska, whatever the humidity is, so that makes, makes it so you need to be able to react to that. If you're trying to work on this, it would make it quite difficult, yeah. and you, you don't want to do that. So how does that come along now? It's good now. So that came along nicely. So, yeah. of course, what working the dough does is it takes, you, everybody's freaked out, everybody's gluten-free. Now, to those who are celiac, I understand what you're going through. But for the rest, listen, glutens are what holds the world together. Yeah. We don't have glutens, we don't have bread, we don't have pasta. And in this case, the glutens are what we're stretching out. This is why we have that little bit of, when we press down on the dough, it gives that little bit of a reveal that yeah. makes it very beautiful. That looks good. That's good. So a little bit more flour and Dakota, I'm going to get you rolling on our fresh uh, tomato sauce. Now, you could definitely do a tomato sauce. So it could be something, uh, you know, pizza sauce. Uh, but what I like to do and what is commonly done in Italy is they'll actually put a raw tomato, uncooked tomato, yep. on top as a base. So I'm just going to take both ends off and we're just going to get this actually right in the food processor. It's going to make quick work of it. You could put this in and start working it together, but the food processor is going to chop that up and make a really nice fresh puree. So we're just taking the root tips off. So beautiful. That bread, I can actually smell it from here. Yeah, when, you're, uh, when you take the bread out of your mixer, it never hurts to just put a little dab of olive oil on the bottom of the bottom of the bowl that you're putting it in. It keeps it from sticking to the bowl too much, and it never hurts olive oil and pizza. It's not exactly a bad mix. They go together. So good. what I want you to do is get it all over the bottom, then up the sides a little bit. I want to show you at home uh, the texture of this dough. I want, to, I want you to show. I want you to see how absolutely beautiful that is. So you can see the texture. Now it was a little moist, and now I can handle it. Yes, Megan. Romas are, uh, you know, I recommend whatever's right, to be honest. Um, something that is good and right, even these Romas I have today, they're, they're a hothouse. They're not awesome. Uh, what you want is you want something that actually, it's almost to the point of being rotten. It's yep. so far down the line because what happens is it develops incredible flavor. If you want tomatoes for making a beautiful sauce like this, Dakota, you can just show them that. It looks just amazing. Uh, what you can do, 
Uh, you know the racks at the uh, at the uh, grocery store where everything is discounted, you know, and and you see in there maybe a little black spot or something. That's the Cut. best food. That's that's <laughs> really good food because it's really it's really mature, just about ready to go at the door, but it's really awesome. So now you can see Bailey's got this beautiful dough. Now listen, if we can make this dough in real time in front of you with yeah. you on in a live environment, you can do this at home. And look at the difference. Fold those up. That's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it right. starts as, and that's what it ends up looking like. So one of the things that I want to talk to you about, there's always a lot of confusion about punching down the dough. Yeah. So now I want, let's go through the steps. So we've incorporated the dough. It's mixed together. Now I've got a, a, a damp kind of rag, and I'm going to put this into proof. I'm going to leave that alone for at least an hour or until it's doubled in size. Yeah. Then I'm going to turn that out, punch that down a little bit again. And all it's doing is developing that activity. That, that, um, uh, help me out here. Yeast. Yeah, well, the what? yeast is, the yeast is active. I mean, it's working. I mean, what would happen is if you were to take this and bake it right now and slice into it, you'd literally have a brick. There'd be no air in there, no yeah. air pockets, yeah. nothing. It would just be, it'd be chewy and hard as a rock. But what happens is, especially when you're making bread, yeah. you let that rise, you're getting air inside that dough and it makes that, that really nice, soft, voluptuous texture. And yeah, you want air pockets in there. Yeah. What happens is it traps that in there, and then the yeast is expanding and it's trying to grow again. Yeah. Really, really getting rid of the gases, and that's really what makes it so beautiful. So you can see here, I'll show you these air pockets. I'll pop them. So we'll see here. You can see these air pockets all in. You can literally pop them, and as you pop it, you can see it deflating. So that's that air building inside to create that texture. Okay, so uh, let's go, uh, just a reminder, if by chance you're just joining us, uh, one of the things we really wanted to do is to give away uh, one of these mixers. So we've got white and red and gunmetal gray. So all you have to do is like and share, make a comment, tell us why you need these mixtures and we'll, or mixers, and we'll give this away. Speaking of mixtures. Speaking of mixtures, uh, and we'll be sure to announce it next year, Fire Wednesday. We're coming to you live every Wednesday with Wild Game Recipes. Yep. Speaking of mixtures, we'll tease you a little bit more as later on today we're going to be showing you a bourbon hard cider. And you may ask what that is, but you're going to have to wait to see. Yeah. So we're <laughs> adding to the Surefire recipes, we're now going to have a drink to pair along with it. Because yeah. the same way we shop, you shop just like we do. Yep. Like, what are we going to eat? We're having a bunch of people over. Yep. What are we going to drink? So we want flavorful, savory, yep. sweet all kinds of things, all kinds of great drinks. And things that pair with what you're eating as well, so we're helping yeah. you along that way too. Like yeah. one of our garnishes for this bourbon is orange, and obviously orange and duck go hand in hand. They go yeah. perfectly together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flour the surface first. Just make sure that you can handle it. And the, the one thing uh, we've got a saying now that we're working out, it's, it's that it's slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yep. Now I gotta be honest, we got it from the movie Shooter. But it works perfect. <laughs> it works perfect in the kitchen yep. because this is what you need to do. You need to slow things down. Take each step and take your time with it. Because you take your time with it, it will actually speed up the whole process. So show a little love to our dough here. I'm going to pull this out. Turn it out. Watch this. Turn it out. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And you may find it kind of funny or whatever, but like giving love to your food is just, you know, it's what you need to do. You need to take your time with it, put your love into it. And as you spend more time with it, you know, adding ingredients and doing whatever you can to make it better, in the end, it's going to taste better. And have fun with it. You know, if we if we haven't done sh grocery shopping in a little while, you got the odds and ends in the fridge and in the cupboards. Take your time, taste a little bit of everything, put it together, see what comes out of it, you know? That's one of my favorite things to do in the kitchen is when we have almost nothing left and we try and find And you make something, something great. Ready? Okay, so let's uh, grab a sieve, we'll drain this off a little bit. So the tomatoes are gonna have a ton of liquid and baking these, we've got the, uh, the uh, asado grill that's perfect, babe. Uh, we've got the asado grill going out there. It's going about 550 degrees, so we're really throwing the mustard on it. Want to make sure it's very hot. Um, yeah, drink that out just a little bit. So uh, it'll only be cooking for about 12 to 15 minutes, so it won't have time to get rid of a ton of liquid. Now, I don't want to get rid of all of the, uh, all of the juice, but one of the things is you want a little bit, a little bit to uh, dry. You see how much juice is actually coming out of there. This is a fine chinois, but I'll show you a little trick. If you get 
your funnel kind of, you know, jam it up on you. If you just punch it like this, you'll see how much comes out. And you just keep doing that, and more and more and more will come out. You can make a drink out of that if you want to. So that's exactly what I was going to say. So um, now we will get to our tomato water martinis. Uh, those will come in a couple weeks. But the tomato water martini is something. Where's the clock there, buddy? Um, the tomato water martini, literally what you do is you keep this beautiful tomato water. You set that aside, and it makes the most beautiful, savory drink. Okay. So that's probably good. I've got a bowl here for you if you want to turn it into that. Oh, thanks, bud. Yep. Okay, so let's get started on some of this prep. Let's see how much liquid came out of that. That's almost a paste now. So it's almost a paste. So this, to me, is very reminiscent of what you might see in a canned pizza sauce. There's that tomato water. Save that for later, man. I'm thinking we might uh, make a little sauce. Oh, it's crazy there. how much there was. Look, take a look at this. And you can use this in just... That came out of just six tomatoes. Just, yeah, no, That'll roll make it, it out. Martins. And make sure, it's, uh, make sure it's nice and dry. Yeah, get it out about uh, about 12 to about this size. Oh, a little, little tight. It's tighter than that. Okay. Um, but you can do it by hand. Do it like uh, old school. Do it like... Yeah, just like... That's exactly. That's just keep, that, okay, just don't drop it. Okay, good. Okay, so we'll, we'll let Bailey play with the dough for a little bit. Uh, you can see how you can get kids involved. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to focus on a little bit of the prep. So get it stre stretched out uh, completely. And just keep, literally, as you come near the edge, you just use your knuckles, okay? You just work around like this. The great thing about pizza is it's like a great thing to get kids involved in because they can do little you jobs like slicing in tomatoes in half, stick. slicing pears you if they're stick. a little bit older, or mm -hmm. just throwing flour around and making and dough. I mean, the dough is flour. very forgiving. If it breaks, you just work it back together and keep playing with it. Kids love. So we, so we got the dough going nicely, and Bailey's just going to keep working on it without putting a hole in it. Okay, just sit her down. Perfect. And then just work on the thick parts just laying flat. And Dakota and I are going to start working on the topping. So um, I'm going to get started on the duck breasts in just a minute. So these duck breasts, we pulled them out. Uh, first of all, they are frozen. So when something is frozen, you want to put it in cold water in the sink. Yep. Uh, don't uh, thaw proteins, meat of any kind. Yep. On the countertop, it's not food safe. You want to make sure that it stays in that four degree, uh, below four degrees Celsius to make sure uh, that it's food safe. So these have just come up. They can be at room temperature for about 20 minutes. That's good. So I'm going to take and set these back here. We're going to get to sauteing those. I don't want to put them on raw because it won't have enough time to develop flavor. So we're going to saute them with a little bit of butter, a little bit of olive oil, and, uh, and then we'll get to, to some of this prep. And I mean, most of the time, you want to allow your meat to come up to room temperature. What happens is, you know, you can imagine yourself, you're really warm inside, or really cold, and you jump in, and you go like this, and you tighten up. The same thing happens with your meat. If you take your cold meat and toss it into a tight pan, it goes, and it shrinks up, and it's going to be really tough. And, and uh, that's what happens to it, is it gets really tough. So I'm literally just taking and slicing that pear in half. Uh, now, I'm not going to remove any of the skin. Um, you'll see, especially if you watch us a lot, you'll see me leaving us uh, leaving skin on, on potatoes, on apples, in this case on pears, yep. because there's a ton of flavor in that skin. And if you're going to roast up, now it's different if you have old season pears. These are fairly new season. They're, they're kind of starting to ripen nicely. So all we're going to do, and Code, you can just go for it, finish those up, is literally, yeah, we'll literally just nice, fine slice. We want to make sure everything's got to be roughly the same size. Because we've got that, you know, 10, 12, 15 minute cooking time, depending on the thickness of the dough, a um, little bit thicker than that. Yeah, just literally form it round and just, okay, let that relax now. And that's perfect, just not too big because our pizza stone's 12 inches. <laughs> and then, uh, then I've got some beautiful heirloom tomatoes here. So I'm literally just slicing those heirloom tomatoes in half. It could be uh, cherry tomatoes, could be Roma tomatoes, could be field tomatoes. Uh, it really doesn't matter, whatever you have. But you know, we always eat with our eyes. If you think about sitting at a restaurant and uh, a dish goes by with the uh, server, you're like, oh my gosh, what Sizzle was that? bubbling, you're like, man. <laughs> we're so visual before we ever taste anything. That looks really good. You can you. see as we're starting to work here, the colors, right? Look at the colors. You just, like you said, you eat with your eyes first. So you were just adding in all these beautiful colors so it looks delicious before you even take a bite. That's good. Okay, so uh, if you want to grab the uh, camera, we're going to do a little yep. bit of sauteing here. 
And I'm going to transfer this over here. I'll leave that one there for a sec. So the first thing I'm going to do is preheat the pan. Preheating the pan is really important whenever you're going to saute. Saute literally means to jump. And so what's going to happen is we want that, uh, we want that duck breast to jump out of the pan. And I've got a little bit of, uh, you know, add a little bit of butter. So butter is going to go in. Butter is a great sign for the temperature of the pan. And And so that's going to come up really nice and quick. Now for seasoning, let's season these with, uh, we're going to season with some pepper. What does duck breast taste like? Well, you know, it's a dark meat. So what you have, let me use this. Um, it's a dark meat. So if you think about, uh, you know, just about everybody's had uh, turkey. And the dark part of the turkey, because this is wild, you're going to have a more intense flavor. That's why we're going to pair it with so many intense flavors. Like, for example, the, the, the saltiness of the Parmesan. Yeah. Um, the, uh, of course, anything that's fat. So if you think about making wild game more palatable, something like the mozzarella, which is going to really fill the palate with fat, is also going to help to, you know, balance that out. Yeah. So the butter is starting to melt now. And as it starts to, to, I don't want to add the olive oil just yet, because I want that butter to brown slightly. And as it browns, it's going to become fragrant. And uh, we're going to stay on this just for a moment so you can see that transition from just straight butter to brown butter. Now, at home, you know everybody's burnt butter before. This is one time where you don't want to turn your back on the stove. You want to make sure that you stay with it. And there's a couple ways to know it. Obviously, you can tell by the way that it looks because it does begin to physically brown. But more than that, you can tell by the smell. It, be, it gets a very nutty smell. It's very fragrant. You can see it's starting to brown right there. And so it's at this point that I want to take either a, a good extra virgin olive oil or uh, camelina oil or canola oil and add that in. Because what's going to happen is there's a, the oil has a higher smoke point than butter. And what will happen is it will prevent it from burning, allowing me to use that uh, effectively. So now is the time. Now, when sautéing, you want to make sure to not crowd the pan. I want to make sure to leave more than enough space so that I get a really good sear and beautiful browning. Now, you notice the fat cap is taken off this. Um, so you could be doing this with the fat or without. But in this case, we've got some duck breasts that, are, uh, that have the fat taken right off them. Hot pan. So you can see we've got a hot pan. And probably of these, I'll do four. And now I'm just going to turn that heat down, medium heat. Take a look at this, guys. This is what's going to be going on our pizza here. How awesome does that look? We got the cheese, the peppers, the onions, the mushrooms. We got lots of goodies. Oh, yeah. And my awesome pizza dough. And your awesome, awesome pizza, pizza dough. Megan, you got a question? Uh, not a question, but Wayne says, looks great, guys. Love the shotgun on the counter. Great drop. <laughs> <laughs> we call that old Lucy. <laughs> So, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, one of the things about uh, duck is, of course, it's a, they're a little, it's a little challenging to uh, hunt duck with it, an arrow, at least, at least for me. <laughs> it's out there, okay? It's out there. So the challenge is there. So you got some beautiful pizza dough. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. It looks great, eh? So the color is there, and then I think what we'll do we'll is, this one too? Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and work on that one. We got lots of people to feed afterwards. Oh yeah. Uh, and I'm just going to tuck this in just a little bit. Beautiful. So as this sits here and rests, there's going to be plenty of air. Yes, Megan, we have another question. Um, not a question. It's really shot. Yeah. Uh, she says this is making me hungry. Pizza is my favorite. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, pizza seems to be a language that everybody speaks. So if you're looking at making wild food palatable, pizza is the perfect vehicle. So, but Alicia, that brings up a great point, which is this doesn't have to be duck. 
This can be venison. This could be we had black bear. Black bear could yeah. be black bear. Could be moose. Could be caribou. Could be uh, cold, mule deer. Cold wild hog. Hog. Imagine a hog cold hip. Hog would be oh, that would be. We should actually do that later yeah, in the no. summer. Yeah. Okay. So now I want. I want. You know what? I hate to make you grab that camera again, but I really want you to see what this looks like. So I want you to see what the difference is. Because sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, I don't have a pizza sauce, or I didn't have time to make a pizza sauce. And for me, making this raw pizza is, uh, is just perfect. So I'm just literally just pu pushing down the inside here just a little bit. And I'm going to take some of this raw tomato. And you can see why it was so important to not have that liquid. Uh, because this would make this dough very soggy. Now, what you're going to get from this fresh tomato is a ton of acidity, but as it roasts, it's going to sweeten up on you. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful, Bay? Oh, yeah. That looks awesome. So it's bright. It's attractive. A completely different, even just from smelling, it looks like a completely different, it smells different and probably tastes different Let's have a look. like a conventional pizza. Let's have a look at these duck breasts now. You can kind of smell they're well on their way. I'm going to put a little bit of seasoning on the back side now, a little bit of uh, salt here, just before I turn them over. Let's have a look at if you got any nice coloring. Oh, yeah. Now, literally, I love these. These are perfect size mallard ducks. I'm literally, I'm turning that off. One of the things I love about cast iron, you know, I'll do coat I'll bring them up here. One of the things I love about cast iron is now I can pull that off the stove and I can literally just set it there and let that residual heat just literally finish cooking those and I don't have to worry about them. So cast iron is not only really easy to handle, uh, it gives you great cooking results, but in this case, it, all, it actually acts as an extra hand in the kitchen, giving me a little bit more time and space to focus on my pizza. And it's yes, Megan? Like a restaurant. Oh, awesome. Yeah, ask if there's any fish recipes in the future. And then, oh, like I said, it would be interesting to thin slice the frozen duck for the pizza like you did in your last episode. Oh, today. fantastic idea. So, thin slicing the frozen duck is a great way, again, if you don't have, if you didn't think of it ahead of time, you're like, oh, I would really like a pizza, yep. you could stop at the grocery store, pick up a frozen dough, or pick up some fresh dough. Yep. If you have an hour or so, make it yourself. Or, and in this case, if you uh, sliced it thin, yep. uh, that would allow you to, uh, to literally yep. saute it and you'd be off to the you races. Use that technique that we used last week, slicing it frozen thinly, it'll work perfectly. So one of the things I want to do is I want to do a quick recap with you of all of our surefires. Bay, if you can read those. Yeah. Because we've been working really hard to bring you a diverse group of uh, recipes. We've been focusing on doing some breads, yep. focusing on cooking all different types of wild game. We want to know what you think. We're going to do some desserts. My wife is a pastry chef, Cynthia. This is for you, dear. I'm trying. I, I, you need to help me convince her that she <laughs> needs to do. She's got like, uh, what's her, uh, her uh, the, the, the peach cobbler? She's got a peach oh, cobbler yeah. that's the, unbelievable. The bread pudding. The bread pudding. Oh. So she's got some really good comfort food, and we want to get her on here maybe next week. Yeah. So let me know if there's any yeah. recipes yeah. That are sweet, anything you've ever loved, everything you want, because we really want to do that. But Jeremiah, we will be doing some fish. We got into some beautiful brown trout last yeah. fall. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be want to cooking those up soon, I know. They're sitting in our freezer, whole and ready to go. Yeah. So in the list of order, our recipe so far, I started on week one with a wild turkey cottage pie. We just got done turkey season, so we did a couple. Second one was wild turkey and dumplings. That was a great recipe if you go back and check it out. Nice thing about that is it used the whole turkey, uh, so nothing was wasted. One recipe used the breast, yep. the next recipe used legs. the legs, yep. and also the carcass for the stock. Yep. So nothing was wasted, which I love. Okay. And then we had some stuffed whitetail backstrap with horseradish cream. Grilled the wild elk burgers on a buttery country roll. I recommend that recipe if you go make those but buttery country rolls. They're the best thing you'll ever eat in your entire life. We've got a mule deer roast, black bear bolognese with fresh pasta. That was fun. That was a fun yeah, episode. It's great with the kids. And we did cured wild salmon with mushroom and peas. That was another good one. So and then last week we did barbecued wild venison Philly cheesesteaks. That was by far the best thing I've ever eaten. 
I will make that at least once a week for the rest of my life. That was the best thing ever. It was truly unbelievable. So we've got some really awesome flavors going together here. And we're just beginning to build. So what we've got is we've got some, we've got that fresh tomato sauce. Yeah. Then we've got some beautiful shredded cheddar. Yeah. Now I've got some of these gorgeous uh, heirloom tomatoes. We're just going to arrange those. I'll let you finish building that, Dakota. Yeah. And what I'm going to do, now that those tur the um, uh, duck breasts have rested, I'm just going to test them. They're still, what we want is we want literally rare. Because when they go on the barbecue, they are going to cook a bit more as well. So I'm literally going to take and slice these babies up. And then we'll put those beautiful long strips right on the uh, pizza. What do you call someone who's a master at pizza? Was it like, pizza master. Was it like pizza, pizza tira or something? Uh, like I, I would say uh, Uncle Mario. Uncle Mario? I'm turning into Uncle Mario here. Look, I got a crust, or crust, a crust going over here. So the smell right now is, I, you know, it's, uh, this is so unbelievably fragrant. I just love it. So I'm literally just slicing this nice and thin, keeping in mind that when I put this on, so now I'm going to take this and we're going to tuck this in. We're going to find a home for all of these little beauties. You can just grab some bay and just find a, just tuck it in, get it in with the cheese and the tomatoes. You're going to have some nice sweetness. Oh man, that looks so good already. Oh, yeah. It's hot. It's hot. It's awesome. So if you're just joining us by chance, uh, just keep in mind. So we're, what we're doing is we're doing a wild duck breast that's been roasted on the stovetop. And we're going to take this out to the barbecue and we're going to barbecue it. So this is coming along nicely. I'm really happy with that. I want to get some more pear on there. And keep in mind, we're going to be doing that special drink. We're doing a bourbon hard cider. So what goes really good with uh, duck? Apples. Apples go great with it. anything kind of sweet. I'm um, just going to do a couple more tomatoes here. These are looking awesome. Babe, can you grab me the arugula out of the uh, yeah. fridge? Yeah, apples go great with it. We're going to do an orange garnish, a little bit of allspice and sugar to rim the glass. It's going to be incredible. It's actually one that we have had before, so I know it's a winner. <laughs> so I've got baby arugula here. It gives me a little bit of green to go on top. Uh, it just kind of literally just... Uh, uh, whenever you do greens like this, uh, it concentrates the flavor, gives it a different flavor, and it really, honestly, it tastes so beautiful when it's roasted. And then the way I'm going to finish this is I'm literally going to put some more of this beautiful cheese on top. Oh, yeah. Wanna, the cheese is like the glue that keeps Fine, it all so together. together. And some fresh thyme would be just great. And then we'll do a little bit of pepper on top of this. Yep. So you can imagine how cool it would be to do individual pizzas. Make them a little smaller. We yep. actually done it one night. We had, we got the pizza stone going one night. It was actually, I was having a, a birthday party. And Dad's like, oh, let's do pizzas. So we made a bunch of little mini pizzas. And it was honestly the most fun I think I've had in a little bit. Well, it's just nice because everybody gets a slice of what they want. And makes their own, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so I think we're going to get this. I'm going to head out. Bay, you stay with the camera, and uh, let's talk a little bit about what we're doing. Let's head outside, and we'll get this drink rolling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this cheese from my piece here in the second piece. I'm going to roll it into the crust. <laughs> here, Bay, Bay, take a minute and show them the, uh, yeah, the, how the dough is So this is the dough you saw me make right at the beginning. And you can see how it's already started to rise a little bit, how the texture is starting to come up. It's already warm just from that light that's in the oven. And that just looks amazing. You need that about another 30 minutes and it'll literally rise almost to the top of the bowl. And that's when it's ready to come out and be divided up again. We're going to go outside and check out the oven. Come into our little man cave here. What do we call it? Little. It's not little. We got, if you look to the right here, we got some crossbows. It's not the right, it's the left. I'm better at shooting than I am at telling what's right or left. Got all of our posters, our camo, our fishing poles, the books we never read, <laughs> all of our bows. This is Dakota's drink setup. He's going to be making a drink here in a little bit. You can see he's got all of his oranges. We did something really cool earlier. We took our bow and we shot it at an orange to get all of the juice out of it. Just having a little fun. And Dad's over here on the pizza stone ready to go on the pizza. So the, the thing about this pizza is we've got it uh, we've got it fired up. So I had a pizza stone in ahead of time. I'm going to close this up. 
you can see I've, I've just opened it up, but it, she was up to 500 degrees. So we're going to let that continue. And what I want to do is I'm going to throw to Dakota here because we're going to make this incredible drink for you. Come on in. All right, everybody, we've been talking about it, bourbon hard cider. I mean, what we got here is some Knob Creek Kentucky straight bourbon, right? We've all had it. We all love it. And like I said, we're going to rim this glass because we want a little bit of that flavor in there. And we're going to rim it with some orange. So to begin with, we're going to make our garnish here. So you just take some regular old navel oranges and we're just going to slice them. Nice good sized slice. The fragrance coming from this orange is just incredible. This recipe is so easy. There's just a few simple ingredients and I'll show you a little trick. So what we're going to do to rim the glass is you get to the end here. And we're just going to quarter this. Put a little slit in it. And we're going to grab this glass here. I'm just going to run this along the edge. The farther you go down the glass, the farther your rim is going to go down. Okay, we'll set that aside and we're going to make our rimming. So, like I said, we have some allspice and some sugar. And we're going to go six to one. If you do any more than that allspice, it'll be a little strong. But that allspice with that flavor of the duck is going to be incredible. So I'm just going to freehand it here, but we will have this recipe for you right after this. Hey, Coach. Yeah. John said nice truck. Nice truck, thank you. <laughs> so let's add that in. And then we're just going to mix that together. Allspice and, Allspice and sugar. That's it? So you can just do this drink without the rim, but like I said, the more steps you add, it just brings more flavor to the drink, and people are going to be wondering. Like, when I make drinks around here, people are like, what did you do to it? This yeah. drink, I, what? I'm like, it's just a few simple ingredients. But no, what I do is I take my techniques for that I learned in the kitchen, which is just little incremental steps to make a dish better. You can do the same thing for a drink. Just add little things here and there. And like a garnish, you'd be like, well, why do I add the garnish? Why do I add the thyme? Well, looks incredible, smells incredible, and you're going to get that little bit of the yeah. taste in it. you got to be careful when Code makes a drink around the house, especially when we're barbecuing. You'll be like, just one. Just try one, and then you'll have one, and <laughs> something will happen to you. Alrighty. So like I said, we're just going to rim that glass, and you'll see that already looks ten times better. Like I said, little incremental steps. Look at that. The glass already looks amazing. Now we're going to start mixing together our drink here. So, like I said, the recipe will be available right afterwards. We're going to take a little bit of this Kentucky Straight Bourbon. About an ounce. About. About an ounce. <laughs> Give or take. Give or take a little bit, and then we're going to grab some of the, We had to chill our nice cider in here. Grab a little bit of that. This is just Thornberry apple cider. And this drink is going to be a stir drink. Now, the reason I'm not shaking it is because, obviously, if I were to shake this drink, all the carbonation from the hard cider would come out. Add a little bit of that. Some of those great apple flavors are going to go in there, and then we're going to take a little bit of pure apple cider. And the reason we want to do that is we really want to get that apple flavor in there. There's apple flavor in the hard cider, but not as much as this pure apple cider. And so look at the color of that compared to it. It's just thick. Yeah. And right. I've yet to meet someone who doesn't like apple cider. And we're just going to grab some ice in here. Cooler really seals. <laughs> Grab a handful of ice, drop that in nicely. Like I said, like we said inside, just take your time. The better your drinks look, the more people are going to love them and drink them, right? Yep. So we're just going to give this a nice little stir. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze that orange that we rim the glass with. I'm just going to squeeze some of that in there too. Those orange notes are going to go great with the duck. Mix that together. And then we're just going to carefully pour this in. You'll see as that fills up. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Hey, that's pretty good. That's Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> and then, like I said, we're just going to take a little bit of this garnish here, a little bit of this fresh thyme. You'll see we use thyme a lot. It is an incredible herb. It just smells amazing, tastes incredible. 
And like, what you want to do is that if there's flavors you use in other parts of your dishes, if you can move, bring them into other parts, it's better. So we're just going to tuck that in there. Grab one of our orange slices here. Put a little slit in it. Slip that on the edge. Look at that. Oh yeah, that looks good, man. Perfect. Okay, so let's just... Uh, no, 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 no. What are you doing? No, no, hold on a second. So this he, is how it always goes. Quality control. This is how it always goes. Quality control. control. <laughs> So I'm getting notes of uh, of jerk spice here and a little citrus. Lovely thyme. He went back to the roots. All spice is obviously one of the main ingredients in jerk mm. spice. It's Jamaican through and through. Oh my God, this is good. Okay. You know what I love about it is now what have been. So we got the apple cider in there. Oh yeah. So you really get that punch of apple cider. And if you love apples or apple cider, mm. this is really brilliant. But you know what? It's not too sweet. You know how some of the drinks, they just overwhelm you with sugar, right? <laughs> a lot of the mixed drinks, you have to have a simple syrup in. Yep. And so this one, there's none of that heavy sugar, natural sugars. And the nice thing that I just tasted that to find out what it was, but the apple cider, the hard cider, mm. adds a really nice bitterness to the. So this is like... If you've drank in pure apple uh, cider before, it's really sweet. So he's added a little bit, but that brings that nice tinge, that nice bitterness. Listen, to I'm telling you, if your friend ha is having a wedding this summer or a party, a get-together, yep. this could be made in big volumes. Yep. Literally serve this and uh, put it in quart jars. P you Trust me, Way you would go. absolutely love it. <laughs> I think we should probably check on that pizza. What do you yeah, say? Yeah. You want to bring that drink? Cause I know I stole it from you, yep. so uh, give it a try. So let's have a look and see where our pizza is. So um, 475 degrees, because yep. uh, I was just checking. Let's see how we've coming along here. Oh, oh man. yeah, look at that. So you can see that crust is starting to puff nicely. You're getting lots of stuff melted mm. down here. And to close that up and let that continue to fire. And incredible. while we do, um, this is a really good time for us. Let's go inside. It's a really good time for us to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, the outdoor chef and uh, and where we can be seen. So the outdoor chef is a uh, show that that was conceived from our love of the outdoors. It came from us literally becoming hunters. So uh, Dakota and Bailey and I, also my wife Cindy and. Uh, daughter-in-law Alicia, my daughter uh, Blair, we're all just beginning this journey. It's literally like the making of a hunter. But the beautiful thing about it is that it is the story of us hunting and angling and cooking. Every last part of it. So uh, it's, it's something that uh, we want to share with you. And we think food is a really good vehicle. Yep. So we want to take a minute and say thank you to, for watching. Um, say thank you to Botech. Yep. and Excalibur and Diamond and yep. Stryker for carrying this message, for providing the platform and for realizing what a powerful thing food is because we all share it yep. and, uh, and it, it yep. allows, it's like a, a door to the outdoors. I mean, that's what you need to understand is they understand that how beneficial this is to you. Like you said, we all have food in common. Yep. So they're bringing you the tools you need after you kill your wild game and harvest your ducks or yep. geese or anything you have the tools to cook it, use it, and use everything that you possibly can so that there's no waste. Yeah. Especially with this, uh, I wouldn't call it a series, the Surefire Wednesdays. Yeah. Take your time to go through. This is a great thing about live. Go through and watch it again. Yeah. Like I said a couple weeks ago, I bought a little notebook, and every week I just write down little things. The knife sharpening, yeah. the saute, what brunoise means, like yeah, all these things. After a couple months, you'll have a book that'll be like your own personal cookbook. Yep. Now, you'll... speaking speaking of a book, uh, yeah. we do have uh, volume one of The Outdoor Chef coming out in September. So we've got 100 plus recipes, yep. and we want to tell you about one of our other partners, which is My Outdoor TV. So if you haven't heard of My Outdoor TV, you need to check it out. Yep. My Outdoor TV is home to the best outdoor content yep. on the planet. You can find fishing, you can find hunting, you can find cooking, you can find the best experts in the world on My Outdoor it's TV. It's so addicting. It's the, <laughs> it's the outdoor Netflix binge watching. Oh world. yeah. You just sit there, you watch anything you want to watch, and I mean, 
for the low price of $9.99. And, but, if you use our name, Collins promo code. C-O-L-L-I-N-S. Use that promo code. You get the first month for $0.99. Cents. You can check it out. Check see it how out. much you'll love it. I know you'll stay with it. Love it. Trust me. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. So we've got a couple dozen recipes on there right now. And we've got a full season of The Outdoor Chef coming up. We're launching it. It's going to be Labor Day weekend. We're going to launch it. So it's something that we put our heart and our soul into okay. because we want you to have an to to have a, a voice, I guess, for what frustrations you have. Is it butchering? Is it storing? You know, we're gonna go into things like canning and curing and uh, all different ki kinds of cooking techniques, braising, roasting, sautéing, yeah. you name it. Start. This is just a start. But more than anything, we want to hear from you. You, your hunting friends, uh, yeah. people you know would enjoy this. We want to hear from you because we want to tailor all of this for you, the viewer. And, yeah. if, you, and if you have any recipe ideas that you'd like to see, I think the past two recipes we've done have been ideas from you guys. The Philly cheesesteak was brilliant, and now this uh, pizza. So it's a great way for us to really make something that we know that you'll love. And we love, like, developing relationships with our viewers, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I can... You got Jeremiah, Mike, Wayne. I know, you know, like all of those names that start coming back. Wayne's from Texas, week. right? Yep. Okay, so we got to go visit <laughs> Wayne for sure. Listen, <laughs> the other thing that's happening is if you're ever in our area, yep. we're actually starting to develop a nice little audience. So there's a nice yep. little audience in front of us. <laughs> so if you're ever in our neck of the woods, we'd love for you to drop yep. by and see the show live. It's something that we really love to yep. do. And uh, you know what? I bet you that pizza is going to look pretty nice. Oh, yeah. So uh, let's go and check on that pizza. Uh, I'm going to roll in here now. How long are we coming along? 7.52. So almost an hour now. How's that uh, dough coming along? Can I see it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, about, it's actually risen about twice the size of what I showed you when we went out the first time. So you can see this is that activity. So it's starting to, to come alive. And, you know, just before we go out, Code, I want to just come over here. Bay, I know you're going to be mad at me, but I'm going to roll up your dough here for a second. Oh, come on. It will make it like a... Uh, cheese We'll there. make a panzerati of, of it later. So with the flour down, what I want you to do... so. It has about doubled in size. So it's at this point you literally want to just turn that dough out. You can see how it's beneficial to have the uh, oil in there. Literally turn that dough out and then, yep, flour on top. That's right. I know. I've done it like twice. Before. I know. That's good. You're, you're brilliant, son. So literally all we're going to do is literally just look at them. This is one of the things I absolutely love about cooking is look at that beautiful texture. Look at that beautiful color. This is something, honestly, like Bailey was saying, five ingredients. This is something you can be proud of. You can share this with your kids. You can share this with your family. It's a and ton of fun. Too. It's a ton of fun. And really, you know, the best part about it is it's dirt cheap too. Right. So it's inexpensive to do. It allows you to cook something from scratch. Throw that back in the oven. Let's go check on the barbecue. Megan, and uh, yeah, Megan, go ahead. Um, Jeremiah says, I want a smoking bear. Hunting. All right, that sounds All right, good, Jeremiah. That's awesome. Jonathan Mike yeah. says, Love to bond over the hunt and the creation of food. Yeah, Wonderful. that's awesome. Right, thank you, Mike. Come on, let's check on these pizzas. This giant pizza. So remember, we'll be posting this brilliant recipe of Dakota's. Uh, and watch for it in the coming weeks and also in the Outdoor Chef episodes. Dakota is kind of our resident mixologist. He's got a great uh, eye and a great uh, taste for uh, making drinks and mixing drinks. Let's have a quick look here. You had to be good at something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is coming along quite nicely. That dough, let's have a look underneath. Oh, it's coming up nice. Oh, yeah. Got a little stick there. So... Uh, one of the things that you, we, we we're dealing with here too is a brand new, brand new pizza stone. Yeah, yeah I'll get her. So let's just set that like that. Close this bad boy up. Do you want a knife? Nope. We're gonna take this back, we're inside. Gonna go back inside. Yep. Come on inside. Let's go. We gotta try this, right? That's the key. No, you can definitely try it. So, there's our pizza. And I've got a pizza wheel here. So let's just 
Let's get this nice and oh, it Sounds beautiful. Yeah. Now, the most important thing is when you're when you're doing a pizza, we're going to kind of rush it here. Uh, but what you want to do is just let it sit for even a couple minutes. Um, and what that'll do is it'll just allow it to just. Oh man, that looks so good. It'll allow it to literally just. Uh, grab, you want to grab me a plate? Yeah. Um, it'll literally look at that. Look at that. Oh, that smells so yeah, beautiful. I want some pizza. Okay, set it right there. So what you've got there is you've got the sweetness of a duck breast. Look at it literally falling off. I want to try the duck because I had never tried it before. Okay, Bailey's gonna try it. He's gonna he's gonna try duck for the first time. You gotta try it with some of the uh, some of the pears and whatnot. That's really good. So what you have with this uh, recipe is you've got a combination of savory, a little bit of sweet. And then what I want to do is I just want to finish it uh, with just a little bit of this balsamic. So the balsamic is just a reduction and it's uh, just a little bit of sweetness. Give that a try. Oh, that looks incredible. Doesn't that look good? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Try that too, bud. That looks good. Oh yeah. Mm. That's delicious. Oh, yeah. So oh. Easy dough, easy pizza. Make sure that your uh, your grill is about 450 to 500 degrees. Um, good. The balsamic makes it. Yeah, it yeah, really it elevates it. So uh, yeah, and I didn't add that to the recipe. That's something we did late. Um, so really hot grill is really important. Yeah. The pizza stone will make your life easy. Now listen, if you don't have a pizza stone, just grab a just like this. Grab a sheet pan or even a, uh, a piece of cast iron, put some parchment on there, and then you can bake effectively here. But don't put it in cold. Make sure this is hot before yep. it goes in. So anything you're going to cook the pizza on, that way when you set that dough down, the way to get a really nice, crisp, crusty dough is to make sure that whatever you put it in on is already heated yep. because it'll start cooking immediately and you'll have uh, really great results. It looks incredible. Man. Looks good, right? <laughs> I can't put my finger on a duck tastes like something, but I can't put my finger on what it tastes like. Yeah. But it's not like something like I know me personally. I don't like lamb because lamb is always like kind of feels like a punch in the mouth, I, you know. But it's I really honestly, nice. I honestly wish I'd gotten you guys this drink before July Fourth, man. Yeah. This would have been a great. Would have been a great one. Oh yeah. So uh, it's a great balance of flavor and is a great way to empty that freezer to make room for it because hunting season's coming up. Oh, yeah. uh, now coming up over the next few weeks, we're going to have some lives. We're literally going to come for, to you live from the deck of our boat, literally yeah. live from the water with fresh catches. Uh, you know, uh, we, our bows are getting tuned right now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, we're going to do a little bit of fishing. And, uh, and I think we're going to say good night yep. and, uh, and we're going to enjoy some of this pizza. Challenge you to find that space this yep. week. Challenge you to get in your kitchen and more importantly, to make get in the dough. kitchen with some family and, like and, said, and make a it. mess. We'd love to see it. To make a mess. Pictures. Yes. We wanted to tag, to you if guys. you make this, please tag yep. us. We'll reshare it. Uh, we'd love to share uh, your journey uh, as you share ours as well. Thank you. And uh, from all of us, the Collins family, have a yeah. great night. Yeah, you too. Okay, time to eat. I've already had that piece. <laughs> I want some more.